Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the video. Before we get to the XRT, let's just take a second and gawk at the Outcast 8S EXB. You know, the Creighton is a beast. I bought that one first. I love the way it looks. I love the way it drives with the slightly longer chassis. But man, oh man, the Outcast 8S EXB just is incredible. I honestly come in and I'll be coming downstairs because I have my freezer and my fridge down here. And I will come down to grab something out of my wife. I'll send me down to get butter. And I come into this room and this truck holds me up. It actually gets me in trouble because eventually I'll hear like, are you coming with the butter? Yeah, I'm coming with the butter. I'm just busy looking at the outcast. But this video is about the Traxxas XRT. We are going to be covering, guys, a few things in this video. One, what I've done with the truck up till now. How has it run? How has it performed? Who is this truck for? Necessary upgrades to ones that I just did cosmetically. One thing that you have to do right out of the box, even guys, as soon as you buy the truck, you might as well just order this part because you're gonna need it. As well as talk about how it compares to the Beast, which is the Traxxas X-Max, the bigger brother to the XRT. And basically, I'm gonna tell you guys whether or not you need an XRT. If you own an X-Max, do you need an XRT? If you own an X-Max and a Creighton 8S, do you need an XRT? And so on. You guys get where I'm going with this. But the other thing, guys, we're going to be doing in this video is installing the Basher Queen Max 6 ESC plate. So this is the carbon fiber ESC plate. It just basically cleans up the install a little bit. I had to remove my VXL 8S because I started having issues with it. It started cutting out kind of the same problems I've had with many VXL 8S ESCs. So anyways, guys, we're going to get the truck over here. We're going to get the body off and we're going to install that ESC mount. And then I'm going to let you guys know all about the XRT. This is guys not going to be as in depth as the Traxxas sledge video I released a few days ago because this truck hasn't needed the amount of work that the sledge did. Overall, kind of a bit of a spoiler alert here, there are a few things you have to change on this truck, but overall, Traxxas has built a very good truck. All right, guys, before I keep going on with the install, I just wanted to show you guys where I'm at and what I'm going to be doing. So this is the actual plate itself, guys. That's going to sit on the chassis. You've got these four holes right here. And with the included hardware, you get four cap screws. So what's going to happen is you're going to bring those four cap screws through. They screw into the bottom of the Max 6 because there are holes at the bottom of a Max 6. And then you're able to then screw this plate down to the chassis. So instead of just having Velcro or something like an ugly zip tie going around, you actually have the ESC mounted to a plate, which is then mounted to the chassis of the truck itself. All right, guys, I got the ESC plate installed, ESC mounted to it. Everything is good to go, nice and clean. We're gonna move on to the on-off switch now, which is really nice, guys, about this is, these two holes right here, she's included hardware so that you can remove the stock screws on the back of the on off switch, remove those and then with the included hardware, screw it back down into the plate so that when you screw this down, instead of just having your on off switch kind of double sided tape, I always kind of have it sitting on here and then after a hard bash it's always just kind of hanging off and floating around, that's not going to be the case. All right, something else I want to bring to your guys' attention is the kit comes with this hardware right here. These little kind of threaded sort of spacers, I chose to just, you could set them in here and then put your screw in and kind of screw into it. But this part, this hex part here, will spin inside the hole. Meaning if you just put them on right now, kind of snug them up a little bit, you're going to be able to then put this on and then just screw the screws down and not have to worry about this thing possibly kind of coming unthread or becoming unbalanced. And in my opinion, this is just the best way to go. All 
All right, guys, so I've got everything installed. So I've got the ESC tray, the on-off switch mount is installed, all the screws are in, everything is good to go. Obviously, guys, a nice snug fit for the Max 6. Kind of cleans up everything a little bit. You don't have to worry about Velcro and you don't have to worry about double-sided uh, tape or zip ties or anything like that. So in my opinion, guys, a great part to have if you're going to be upgrading this to the Max 6. And on that note, let's talk about the Max 6 and the VXL 8 All right, so when it comes to the Max 6, in my opinion, guys, it is a must-have upgrade the vxl 8s is a turd it is junk it is garbage i it bothers me that they release such a great truck like the xrt but then make you spend money on their electronics because they release them rtr my vxl 8s right from the beginning was giving me issues it would cut power it would give me i forget all the different codes and stuff but they happened at different periods so i could be out driving the truck for 20 minutes and have an issue or i could be out with the truck for one minute i could be out in warm weather i could have been out in cold weather i could be running my paddles i could be running my method rc belted wheels and tires and i just had issues all over the place so it wasn't like oh i was in deep deep snow and the truck was bogged down and i was just holding it and pinning it and it, it went thermal or something like that that wasn't the case it happened at all different times while i was running the truck my VXL 8S did go back to Traxxas and they gave a credit to my hobby store, which obviously the hobby store gave to me. I did even try guys to do the update. So the firmware update, if you, when you connect this truck, if you've got the Bluetooth module, you connect it to the app, it will want to update everything right away. And when it came to the ESC, it just kept failing. It just kept looping and looping and looping. And I kept trying it. I looked online and the actual guys, the only fixes I saw where was when people sent the ESC back to Traxxas. So I wasn't going to do that. I sent it back to Traxxas, but basically told them to keep it. I told my hobby store, I don't want it back. And again, they hooked me up with the credit. So yes, in my opinion, guys, a Max 6 is a great upgrade. Mama Monster X8S as well would be an excellent upgrade. If you're still continuing, guys, to use the stock motor, which I plan to do for a bit. I bought this truck, guys, right after I bought my Arma Outcast 8S EXP. And I was spending money on that truck. And then this thing got released and I got excited. So I bought it, but I also didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. So I've been kind of really trying to build this truck and drive this truck in its stock form as much as I can. Now, after the Max 6, we move on to what is 100% an absolute upgrade that you need to do. And that is back here. So I have the Garage Life RC wing mount. Now, I don't know exactly, guys. I don't know anything about 3D printing and all the different compounds and stuff they have. But whatever he uses is absolute perfect for this truck because I broke the stock wing mount. Now, don't have to take my word for it, guys. Every video that you will watch of this truck, they break the stock wing mount. Hobby stores are kind of like, hey, don't worry. It's only a couple of dollar part. Well, of course, they're going to say that they're selling you parts. Personally, I don't want to keep breaking it apart. I don't want to keep replacing it. I even tried zip ties. I eventually broke those two. And I got in contact, guys, with Garage Life RC. We started talking. He sent me out this mount. And since I've installed this mount, guys, it has not broke. It's a very, I don't want to say spongy material because that is the wrong word. But it's not like a plastic. I, I mean, hey, if he's watching the video, maybe he wants to comment it or if somebody else can, they can comment on it. But it's just got some flexibility as well as because he's written, written XRT in the middle here, it kind of provides more webbing as well. But again, everything, guys, kind of moves a little bit. I broke my stock wing mount ripping across grass, bouncing along. All of a sudden I looked at my wing mount just went, pfft, fell back. Since I've had this mount, jumping it, crashing, jumping on pavement, wheelies, everything you can think of, it's survived. So again, guys, in the description below, you will see a, a link to the Garage Life RC website. If you are buying an XRT, just buy the mount. You're gonna need it. Like within the first to second run, you're gonna break the stock one just have this and in my opinion guys just literally get the truck out of the box pull those screws install it it only takes a couple of minutes and you will be good to go now another part that i got guys from gradual life rc which i would say is not an absolute must however if you're choosing to run different size batteries well it kind of is so this is his mount it's just a tray that's you remove all the stock stuff you install this tray he gives you all the hardware that you need and the velcro strap as well i my kit guys was kind of like a pre-production so it only came with the one strip i'm not sure if he includes more now i did have additional straps going this way and i didn't need them i at one point i decided you know what i'm going to see how it works because obviously guys it still kind of sits in here 
the battery still sits in here that I removed them, kept using the one strap and I had no issues. So I'm just gonna continue guys using the one strap. It makes putting the battery in and out a lot faster. Again, I run guys a couple of different sets of batteries. I have these, which are my 4S 6000 high voltage Gen Zase packs. These fit in the stock mount. You just have to use kind of a couple little spacers to kind of snug things in. But the other set I have, which I have to get out of the X-Max because I still have the cover on it, is the 7500s and they're a lot taller and they don't fit underneath the stock mount unless you do the reverse battery tray kind of clamping thing. But then you're having to do that and then change it back if you want to run the other size battery. So, hey, having something like a vac Velcro strap is a lot easier. Keeps everything clean. There's a little foam pad under here to add a little bit of protection. So again, not a must have upgrade guys, but if you're choosing to run different size batteries or a taller battery to get more runtime, uh, yeah, you're gonna to wanna to pick these up. Again, there is a link to those in the description. Now, during this video, you've probably noticed back here that I'm missing something. I, on my last outing guys, I destroyed the stock spur. Now I say destroyed, that's probably not the best term, but you can see here, hopefully if I can get this to focus, you can see some chips there, some chips there. I think there was a couple of more I thought right there. And it started just making some awful noise. So I did order a Robinson Racing 46 tooth spur. It's coming from a main. It's probably gonna take a bit to get here. So that's why I haven't been running this truck lately. But again, in my opinion, and I have been using the word in my, or the phrase in my opinion, because if I don't, people trashy in the comments, this is another must have upgrade. My X Max was the same thing. The stock pinion, the stock spur, junk metal. They often refer to it guys as powder metal. It doesn't even look like metal, oddly enough. Uh, it's just junk and it will strip. It will strip in your first few runs. So do you have to change it right away? No, but I would say once you find kind of the gearing you like, order yourself a hot racing spur, get yourself a better quality pinion, Robinson racing, whatever. Because on my X Max, guys, I went through pain trying to keep that truck running until I got into replacing the pinions and spurs with better quality stuff, getting rid of the pins underneath the motor mount so I could have, get a better mesh. I have stuck with the pins so far on this. Uh, probably a bad idea. I don't know what I'm thinking. I should just pull them and upgrade to something like a metal motor mount where you can lock tight in the screws and all that stuff, set your mesh and be good. But I've been trying to give this truck a chance in its stock form, as well as guys, I've just been trying not to spend money on it. So yeah, I've been trying to keep this truck as close to stock as I can possibly get, minus a few cosmetic upgrades. I've got the aluminum shock caps and stuff on here. I always have to do that because I can't stand plastic shock caps. But again, you know what? You don't have to do this right away, but I would say probably your next order after you've got the truck, you've ordered the wing mount, get yourself a better spur and a better pinion, and it'll definitely pay off. Now, when it comes to broken parts, besides from parts I've already gone over, I do have a few issues, but I don't think these issues here, guys, so I've got obviously a hole in this, I don't know if you wanna call this really a skid plate, it's just kind of underneath the chassis, you got the servo and stuff under there, drive shaft is under there. I've got a hole here, probably from landing on a rock, because this is pretty thin, and because of the way this chassis is, it's not like the X-Max where you know, it's kind of bows up kind of thing and it sits like this. So your impact is on your skids. On this truck, you kind of unfortunately hit right here first. So if there's a rock or there's something there, it's gonna poke through. So I've got a hole here. I've kind of broke it here. There's cracks here. And I think there's cracks here guys as well. So at some point I will fix this, but I'm not in a hurry. I'll wait till it full on fails before I start pulling all this apart because I think I'll be okay with this. I think these happen, guys, in pretty harsh. I was jumping at the school that I run in. I was jumping off a snowbank. I was landing on pavement, as well as guys, we were obviously, I was jumping off a snowbank, so it was cooler. So the plastic, you know, to be fair, was cold. It's going to break easier. I was taking pretty good sized jumps, landing on pavement, not the best conditions. So I'm not going to fault the truck for that, but I am going to bring attention to the fact, guys, that unlike the X Max, that where these sit a lot lower and then the chassis is, is high, that is not the case on the XRT. This is actually, guys, your lowest spot right here is this belly of the chassis. It's not the skids. So just be aware of that. Now, another part that's kind of hard to show, but it's coming across pretty easy today. You can see my upper bulkhead broke right there. There's supposed to be material there. You're not supposed to see the pin, but you can see the pin. And I know other people, guys, have broke that part as well. And if you come back here, same dealio. 
broken. You can see the pin. So that is kind of a bummer, but like with the chassis and all that other stuff, guys, I am not changing it until it full on fails. From experience, bulkheads, all that stuff on an X-Max are not a fun part to replace. It's quite a bit of work. You do have to pull a lot of the truck apart for that. So I am just gonna keep driving it, enjoying it. And at some point when I walk up to the truck and there's two pieces, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so now that we've got the Basher Queen ESC mount installed, we've talked about guys, some of the issues I've had with the truck. We've talked about some of the parts I've had to upgrade, modify. Let's get to sort of a rolling review. I've had this truck since it came out, but I still feel like there's a lot of time a lot of running, a lot of stuff I have to do with this truck before I can give it a proper review. Especially, guys, since a lot of my running up till now is has kind of been, let's say, in the winter. So it's been at colder temperatures. So those parts that have broke, the bulkheads, the underneath the chassis, that center skid plate piece, would those have broke if I had been out in plus 20, plus 25? I don't know. So until, guys, spring and summer comes, it's hard for me to really comment on the durability of the truck. The truck has always ran... I haven't had anything besides from like, let's say my pinion or spur issues. I've never had anything kind of catastrophic that's made me completely stop. So I haven't broke something where something's hanging off and I can't keep running the truck. But let's face it, those parts are gonna be need to be replaced at some point. But till then, and until I have a major breakage, like I've already mentioned, I'm not gonna do it. Here is what I can say so far. The XRT is an absolute blast. It is a lot of fun to drive. It's a lot of fun to throw around. It's a lot of fun to jump. You feel that difference in weight if you're used to driving bigger, heavier trucks, or even if you're used to driving, let's say something like a modified X-Max. And I say it that way because let's face it, we all buy trucks and we all modify them. We throw, you know, shiny aluminum pieces on. And sometimes we can go crazy with that. I don't have a crazy heavy aluminum up X Max, if that makes any sense. But I do have some parts on there that have added weight, kind of like unnecessary weight, where with the XRT guys, I haven't done that. And the only reason I've put these things on is again, I already had them and they didn't actually weigh that much difference compared to if I was to go full crazy, you know, whatever on the truck. So that's why you're not gonna be seeing a ton of upgrades. And like I mentioned, I do not wanna get to the point or it'll be a while before I ever change the motor out. I'm going to enjoy the stock motor. I'm going to work with the gearing, work with the cooling, keep the Max 6, and enjoy it. And in my opinion, guys, so far, and remember, I'm coming from my 1100 kV X Max. I'm coming from that 800 kV XL2 uh, Creighton 8 SEXP. This is still a lot of fun. And I've had trucks where I've gone out and ran that truck, and then I go to run the next one. I'm like, wow, this is pretty boring. That was not the case with the XRT, being that it weighs a little bit less it's a lot of fun. Overall, guys, yes, I'm very happy with the XRT. It looks awesome. And if you like this color of body, stay tuned because something else in the next few days is going to be here that sort of looks like that. That's a big hint on what's coming to the channel. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this sort of review of the XRT. It was completely different than the video I just did of my sledge because I don't have as much to say. Yeah, the truck has a couple of minor issues to get them fixed and you've got an awesome truck to drive. But anyways, guys, have a great day.